Hi, it's Julie from Artfully You, and today we're going to be painting this palette knife beat scene. Let's go! Okay, so um, the colours we're using tonight, it's black and white, um, your, and your three primary colours to start with. So alizarin red, your yellow, cadmium yellow, and your ultramarine blue and then um, if you have it yellow ochre and phthalo green if you don't have these we can easily make them so um, the phthalo green we could just make with ultramarine blue and a little bit of yellow and the yellow ochre we can make with purple and um, a little bit of yellow so if you don't have those colors don't worry about it too much um, if you happen to have turquoise in a tube, that's great too, but if you don't, don't worry, we can make everything from scratch. So I am going to switch cameras now and spotlight myself. Um, if I'm doing palette knife, I do like to paint on wood because um, it's a little bit more robust, but you can definitely do it on canvas. Um, so I'm going to start with my whites and my blues. So I would say start with your ultramarine blue and your white. If you have it, you can get out either your turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, phthalo green. And if you don't have phthalo green, you can get out some yellow. We'll just mix it with the ultramarine. But you're going to need your whites and blues to start with. Okay. Okay. And I am going to show you my palette as well for for my mixing okay so i'm gonna try and um make this kind of greeny greeny turquoisey blue to start with so i'm gonna show you my palette okay i'm gonna use my large brush for the first first few layers anyway um and for mixing. So I'm going to pick out some of my ultramarine blue and make myself a new little mixing area. Let's change the exposure on this. Okay. Okay. So ultramarine blue. Okay. And then if you have turquoise ready made in the tube, you can add turquoise straight into that. If you don't have turquoise already made, add a little bit of your phthalo green. Okay, and then we're going to add some white. If you don't have phthalo green, you can just add yellow to it. I'm going to make this a little bit greener. Julie. Hi. Can I just use tropical blue? Uh, sure. Sounds like or a nice that yeah, that sounds like a nice color. Tropical blue sounds good. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into this too. How is everybody? Good. How about you, Jared? Um, today was not a good day. Oh, wow. No. Um, I got a call today and said that my contract is done. Oh. Um, for booking the vaccines. So does that mean that today was your last day then when they called you or did they give yeah. you time? Oh. They're giving not... me a little of notice, but that like, basically that's it. Oh no. Well, it makes sense because mostly everyone's vaccinated. Yeah. So. So we're gonna paint a, um, about an inch long stripe of this turquoisey blue along the top on a value scale you're looking at about a mid value so about a four or five to start with so i'm going to put this in some very kind of distinct areas i'm going to do an inch long stripe along the top And then um, about a third of the way down, 
I'm going to do another kind of strip. Julie, if we're painting, what way should we paint? Sorry? What way should we paint? How do you mean what way? The, landscape um, or portrait? Oh, um, we're going to be doing, well, I'm doing this landscape, but, but you can, it's totally up to you which way you want to do it. Okay. Now, everybody who knows me knows I like to do horizon lines on this side. So I'm going to take my horizon line slightly above center. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick a point that's kind of in the middle, but go slightly more towards the sky. And I'm going to paint myself horizon line. Don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. So do you just do one line just like that? You're not going across? Yeah, this one you mean? No, yeah. do it just like that, yeah. So it's gonna be very painterly. Okay, without cleaning our brush, I'm just gonna wipe it off on the paper towel. I'm gonna dip straight into my white. Can you see that my brush has still got blue on it and I've dipped straight into my white? I'm purposely not cleaning it. So the way I did kind of a little bit of a stripe over this side, I'm gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna go directly underneath that, that white, the, sorry, the blue. I'm going to go underneath the blue area. Again, I'm just kind of making this quite painterly. So this was with my unclean brush with my blue. I'm going to do another one of those. So again, not cleaning my brush. I just put white on the end of my bluey brush. And I'm going to kind of go underneath that other section of blue. So this time I'm kind of using the whole brush to wipe my brush off on the canvas. We're going to be very loosey goosey about this. Okay. The next thing you can do is you can clean your brush now. You don't have to clean it like uber well. I'm going to go back to my white. So this time my brush is clean, my white. I'm going to start by going above my horizon line. And I'm going to have a fairly liquidy white, um, particularly if anybody's painting on wood. I would say go a little bit on the liquidy side. Okay, so my horizon line has more white in it. And then I'm just going to fill in the gaps with the white. So this time you can do a little bit of blending if you want. You can add a little bit of water to it if you want to blend. Is everybody with me so far? Yep. Excellent, okay. 
Now, there is supposed to be a storm coming last time I checked the radar. Big one. A big one. So if for any reason we lose power, because <laughs> I live in the countryside and it does happen, um, hang in there. I will try and keep reconnecting if we lose power. Worst case scenario, I um, I'll do a do over another day if we have a massive power cut. Um, I'd just like to have a contingency plan. We'll we'll just resume where we left off next Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry, right, Julie, I'm a bit behind. So you put white under the blue? Yeah, and now I'm just blending it all. So you, if you want, you can just use a little bit of water to blend everything together. Sorry, Sandra, did you say something? It says, your wings and hail. Oh. Sorry, I heard hail. We're going to get hail. I never understand hail when it's been like 39 degrees today. How can we have ice when it's 39 degrees? <laughs> Very strange. How is everybody doing? Good. Doing okay? I'm a little bit behind, Julie. Can we pause for a minute? Absolutely. Now I'm painting on a canvas that I should have sanded the edges first. So sometimes these wooden canvases are a little bit rough on the end. <laughs> and I have a little bit of extra fiber going on. Maybe I'll add a bit of texture to my paintings. I'm excited to do these seagulls with you. <laughs> Mary, I just had a booking for Ikea. You did? Is that to do with you by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> nope, not. No. What? <laughs> Ikea? A guy called Brian um, booked me to do a customer appreciation night. Um, oh, it will, I be, um, it will, that would be the, um, the guy who looks after every, all the specials that go on in the store between workers and customers. Ah. He, he, he does, a lot he's he's actually very talented in what he does i felt terrible because he phoned me up i was at the splash pad with dean and there was kids screaming everywhere and i couldn't really hear him and i had this guy saying hi it's brian from ikea how are you doing today and i'm going fine because it sounded <laughs> exactly like a sales call and then oh, he's, who am i speaking to and i said why do you want to know <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, and then he immediately went, because I want to hire you. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, it, but it was like the exact same script you get when, you know, yeah, like, somebody's trying to sell you something. Yeah, I said, I'm really sorry for you trying to sell me something. <laughs> He's like, no, I want to hire you. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that is really good. Yeah. So yeah. it's with customers that he was saying. Yeah, they're going to book out the restaurant and um, do a paint night for customers. Very nice. That Does sounds really cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's like certain customers or it's just a, whoever books it first, but. It'll either go two ways. It'll be like, um, like a, a 
draw monopoly kind of type thing, or it will be customers will pay so much, or they'll give so many tickets away, or right. they, they do multiple ways of doing customer things. Right. Hey, Julie, who <laughs> knew that you would be doing something like that? I know, it's kind of fun. I've done some really interesting stuff this year. The CBC, Ikea, <laughs> yeah. St. Joseph Brand Hospital, McMaster University. I've done all sorts of cool stuff. That's good. That's good. Excellent. So I was thinking, I wonder if Mary's got something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping away see? from all of that. <laughs> Julie, do you have a painting in that Joseph Brandt Maple Leaf uh, fundraiser? I don't know about that. Oh, okay, yeah, it's on the next three weekends in Burlington, the show. It's a, oh. I wasn't sure if you meant when you were saying Joseph Brandt, if you'd done a painting. No, they want me to do um, a, an employee wellness program for quite a while actually for the next six months um yeah. but I'm, anybody, I'm still waiting for it to be approved by the board oh if anybody's interested there is a a painting fundraiser on display the next three weekends or sundays oh this past one of local artists that did paintings oh. they're designed to be outdoor paintings uh, oh, but wow. yeah oh that sounds fun so I think they're on display the next two Sundays. I forget which community center or air they're on the display at, but there's about 70 paintings. Wow. And they were all given a big wooden maple leaf and they were to paint whatever they wanted on it. Oh, wow. And uh, the, they're beautiful, some of them. That's we saw it being shown on CHCH News. Hmm. Oh, I would have loved to have been involved in that. Oh, well, next time, maybe. Okay, so I am mixing ultramarine blue with phthalo green. So if you don't know how phthalo green, just put some yellow with ultramarine blue. And we're going to define this horizon line a little bit more. So it's going to look quite dark to start with. So you should get this like really nice kind of marine bluey green. So ultramarine blue and phthalo green. And we're gonna do um ultramarine blue and what? And phthalo green, but you can add um yellow in instead of phthalo green. green, like what what is phthalo green? Like a light green or a dark green? It's a it's a very kind of like Christmas green. Okay. Like a... like a Christmas that green. Me? Let's see, sorry. A sap green? Um, yeah, you, you'd probably best just take an ultramarine blue and add in some yellow to it because even sap green might be a little bit, have a bit of red in it. So if you, if you don't have phthalo green, just add a little bit of yellow to ultramarine blue. And then I got an awful color. <laughs> oh. oh, what? how do I make it better? <laughs> Sorry, that's my Alexa telling me to close the chickens because <laughs> I'm upstairs. <laughs> It'll go off twice saying close the chickens. Here's your reminder. Close the chickens. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if it's going a bit weird, just stick to your ultramarine blue and just add a very, very small amount of yellow to it. And then immediately before it dries, we're going to add a little bit of yellow, uh, white, and we're going to mix some white just below the horizon line back and forth just to lighten it a little bit. So this bit 
You kind of need to do it while it's still wet. I'm deliberately going a little bit stronger than the original, the one to my left. I just wanted a bit more of a striking contrast. So I am going to go to, so past my horizon line, I'm going to do about two finger spaces, depending on what size canvas you're on. You want to take it to, you've got about at least a third left at the bottom. So we've done a little bit of a, an ombre transition. Okay. Right. So I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to get some pure white. I'm not really worried about cleaning my brush too much. So I haven't cleaned my brush. I've just wiped it off. And I'm going to do a pure white line going about three quarters of the way along. And I'm going to blend it so it doesn't have to be, I'm doing pure white, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't stay pure white. That's going to be our first wave. Sorry, can you repeat those instructions again, Julie, with the um, with the white? Yep. So two finger spaces down from the horizon line. Yep. Well, I yep. just yep. wiped my brush oh, off. <laughs> I wiped my brush down off on my paper towel. I didn't. I didn't clean it, and then I dipped into my pure white. Yep. And I went three quarters of the way across my canvas. Yep. And then I kind of blended it. And because my brush is unclean, you should get a bit of a kind of ombre effect. So this is our first wave. And I'm just going to go back and forth. And this is going to be our pattern all the way to the bottom. So this one's only about one finger space wide. So I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to dip into my white again, do exactly the same thing. But this time I might put the emphasis more in the center of my canvas. So I'm going to draw a bit of a white line. The emphasis of the white is going to be more in the middle. You see how I did that? Uh, you just pulled it forward? Just kind of blobbed it along, yeah. And then with the residual paint that's on my brush, I'm just going to go, oh, that went a bit of a funny color. <laughs> Didn't want that. Yeah, I'm just going to um, bring it across to the end. We're going to go over all of this anyway. So it's just kind so of. What, what color was that one? Was that one more the blue from the sky or was that more the dark it's color? It's just what's left on my brush from here. Oh, okay. So I've only literally just what's left on my brush. So whatever you used for the water. 
But because we're now putting white on our brush, it's just slowly diluting. And we don't really need to worry about painting over here on the right hand side because we're going to cover this in beach anyway. So it's going to focus on the left hand side. And again, don't clean your brush, just put a little bit more white on your brush. I'm not cleaning it. And I'm going to go this time, I'm going to do a few lines. So I'm going to kind of seesaw my brush back and forth a bit. So see how I'm kind of seesawing my brush? I'm focusing on the left. Seesawing. Until basically I've used up all the paint on the brush. Yeah, I'm just focusing on the, the left. And we're going to tidy all this up later. We just want a gradual transition from this strong horizon line to where the water is going to be pretty shallow. And then depending on how wet or dry your canvas is, you may need to give this a little hair dryer before we add the beach. You okay, little man? Just to have a show of hands, how many people are going to have a play with a palette knife tonight? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Cool. And as a show of hands, how many people have used a palette knife before? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Fun. So if you need to give it a hair dry, give it a hair dry. If you want to try out the palette knife, you can do now. Or if you want to do kind of an underpainting with the paintbrush first, I'm going to leave this all completely up to you. Now, can you see the color of my wooden canvas is this kind of light beige? This is actually the perfect color for the beach that I'm trying to achieve. So I'm gonna be using yellow ochre and white. And if you are mixing this from scratch, then you can make, just get your cadmium yellow and make a purple, a mix of very, very tiny amount of purple and with cadmium yellow. So purple is red and blue, then you add it to cadmium yellow. Or if you already have yellow ochre, you're just gonna add white to yellow ochre if you have yellow ochre ready made. So we're going for this like sandy color. Um, you said the orca or uh, yellow orca and white. Yeah. 
yellow chrome white. And I would say more, more white than yellow ochre. You just need, you're just going to be tinting it. So this is my white. And I'm putting in a little bit of yellow ochre into it. So I'm just kind of, I'm trying to basically match the color of my canvas. And I'm going to start about a quarter of the way from the latch of my canvas. And say so you can either do this with a paintbrush or a palette knife. We're going to make a little bit of a kind of sand hill. Julie. For the sand, why would one use a palette knife instead of a brush? Like, why would you elect to use the palette knife? Instead? I'm just experimenting with a palette knife. I thought I'd get a little bit more texture in this painting. I'm going to put a bit of texture in the whole painting, but just because this is part kind of my focal point or the leading part of my focal point, I just thought it would be fun to try out something with a little bit more texture. And just because a lot of people have asked me to do another palette knife painting, but I like to get my underpainting done first with, um, with a paintbrush. I just thought it'd be a bit, a bit of fun. But you can easily just do this with the paintbrush if you want to stick to paintbrush. But we did the poppy fields that was a long time ago now, I think. Yeah, November 11th. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mix them up. Like spreading butter. <laughs> I was thinking it looked more like cake, icing a cake. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did a lot of that this week. Um, it was my son's sixth birthday. So I made him a cat cake. Yeah, that was a really good cake you made. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was so cute. It was made with love. The never perfect box. My mom always made me homemade cakes and I feel like it's a little bit of a tradition. What did I miss out on? Did I miss a cake? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, a cat You're cake. Late. You were late to the party. <laughs> Who got cake and when? <laughs> It, it was Dean's birthday. Yeah. Ah. Oh, wow. So are you sending him to school? Yeah, I'm going to send him to school. Yeah. 
Time has come. We're sending hammers too. Yeah, are you? Yeah, I think, I don't know what the rules are going to be about masks. I mean, I'm lucky that Dean's pretty easy going, so he'll he'll just do what all the other kids are doing. Um, um, Julie? Yeah? The rule for masks is anybody under um, grade four or one, one or four, they have to wear I a mask. I think it got dropped because my yeah. grandson was in grade one last year and he had to wear a mask. Yeah, and the kindergarten, the four-year-olds had to wear a mask last year. And it was one of the reasons why I kept him home apart from keeping Ken safe. That was the main reason was to keep Ken safe. Because I just didn't know if, if junior kindergarten he was going to be able to keep it on and keep his mouth away from things. He's lots of, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a little bit older now. I think it'd be it'd be easier for him to follow along, you know. Well, now they're now they're like grown and used to it. Yeah. Everywhere that like everywhere we go, Hannah, like no, she's like, oh, I have to put my them, I have to put my mask on. Yeah, yeah, Dean's more used to it. It's now. funny how she's come to like. like how she's gotten used to it. I know, Dean. If he goes somewhere, and. Um, he forgets it. He, I think he's like, oh, it's like he's been caught naked or something. He's like, <laughs> and he runs out. I need my mask, I need my mask. So yeah, it just becomes second nature to him. Um, That's a good analogy. Yeah. Naked. <laughs> it is. It's like, oh, you know. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry. I've got the shape. And again, I'm going to leave it up to you whether you want to do the next bit with a palette knife or the brush. Okay, because um, if you want to start adding texture, you can do. I'm going to leave this up to you. So wherever we put some of the lighter areas on our canvas, I'm going to start just introducing a little bit of that yellow ochre that I've got in the sand. So again, I'm just gonna kind of start bringing it in. So this is yellow ochre and white, same as my sand color. And I'm just gonna kind of scrape it across. Sorry about the noise. So we'll have some fun with it. Kind of, we are gonna put some, some thick white in as well, but just kind of think about where you would like your light source to be. I'm gonna have mine quite, quite central, kind of coming down at this angle, but you know, think about where you would like your light source to be. I'm gonna, just apply some of this yellow ochre with the white on my horizon line. Again, you can do this with a paintbrush or a palette knife. Maybe a bit of scrapey going on from the palette knife people. Quite satisfying though, don't you think? Mm -hmm.
you know, an experiment, if you're using palette knives, experiment with different sizes, experiment with the edge, just kind of be playful with it. I always paint over it. True enough. <laughs> you know, just have some fun, right? You know, try using the edge, try using the flat, see what different effects you can get. And we can also let it dry and add more layers later. I used the side, pressed down on the side, and then I got my fan brush to blend it. That's a good idea. And you can also um, try putting some of the turquoises in too. Oh yeah, good call. You know? It's amazing how many different colors you can get. Just just one swipe of the palette knife. I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed looking at paintings created with palette knife or with a little bit of palette knife added on for a bit of texture. And they look quite cool. You do use a lot more paint though. <laughs> yes. So Julie, you haven't used any out of the tube turquoise. You've made all your turquoise. Well, I was until about three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, caught you. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie. I just did a sneaky squeeze of some turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. I was just dying to use it. So, yeah, caught me in the act. Julie, can I show you? Yes. Wow, look at that. Wow, that's beautiful. Gosh, that came out so well. Yeah. And I'm going to leave it and not touch it because I'm happy with it. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's knowing when to quit is the hardest thing. I'm going to get a drink. I 
I asked about the turquoise, Julie, because it's such an expensive paint to buy. I know. I know. It's only because I happen to have it in. And I thought, really want to use that tonight. And my, uh, my husband's doing a, a renovation of my art studio for me. That's why I'm upstairs. And I'm determined when I move back in to purge a lot of stuff. <laughs> and if I haven't used it, I'm going to have to throw it away. So I'm trying to start using more of my colors and cheers everybody <laughs> cheers see julie i remembered to sand oh i didn't sand that was really bad I wish it I makes could. a huge difference yeah i didn't sand i was naughty what are you sanding? So I'm painting on wood. So I just gave it a rough sand with like 150 grit just to smooth out the edges because sometimes the edges peel. Like this. See my edges peeling. Yeah, like that. Just like but that. Okay, so let's go back to the water for a little bit so you can do it again with a palette knife or a brush or, or try both we're just going to dab some white paint to create a bit of a wave <coughs> excuse me bless you bless you so i'm going to make a bit of an uneven i'm going to keep the flat the top flat, but I'm making a little bit of a wave by dabbing my palette knife. I'm using the flat of the top, or you could use a paintbrush. There's no need to your palette knife if you don't have one or you just want to stick the paint. I'm just sliding it across. So if you want to make it look like there's a little bit of spray, you can get a brush and just dab. You can dab up and over. In a few areas if you want to. Is kind of combining the palette knife and the brush.
Okay, so one thing we can do a little bit later is cut in a tiny bit of darker blue underneath the waves of the paintbrush just to create that roll of the wave, but we can do that later. And I'll go to my next wave. This one's a bit flatter because it's getting closer to the shoreline. So I'm just gonna get my palette knife and I'm gonna put a little bit of a white line across here. Again, using the flat edge. So I kind of scoop it and then I'm going to take the flat edge across. And then uh, just going to put a few more thin lines. Are those dollar store pellet knives, Julie? This one is. I actually like this more than my expensive one. So this was Dollar Armor, and there was a big set in this kind of canvas wrap. You can just see the corner of it here. Um, and it came with, I think, five pellet knives and five paintbrushes and the wrap, like four dollars. <laughs> and this palette knife on its own, probably, I don't know how much this costs, a lot more. But uh, yeah, these seem to be working out great, these little ones. Excuse. So on this one, I've just angled my waves a tiny bit just to, you know, create the feeling of them coming up against the shore. I've just put a few lines with my palette knife. I am going to put a little bit of beige into that as well to make it look like the water's transparent towards the shore. But I'm going to come back to that in a minute. While I've got my palette knife out or with your paintbrush, let's just do a few thin lines on the horizon. Just to create some distant waves.
How's everybody doing? Good. Having fun? <laughs> you know, and if there's areas that you feel have got a little bit too abstract, you can always smooth it over with your brush. You know, you can always introduce a little bit of brush to, you know, smooth a few areas out. Like I do that often. Nice to have a little bit of a combination of textures. Oh, very nice, Jared. I like your beat. So I'm gonna get a bit of that beach color. And I'm actually gonna mix in a little bit of my, tiny bit of my water color into the beach color. So I've, I've taken my beach color and I've just put a little bit of my turquoise in. So it's the yellow ochre and white blended with a little bit of turquoise. So it's made like a gray. And um, I'm just gonna put this in, in a few areas. So I'm going over the top of the waves. But mainly I'm gonna go kind of here where it would be quite transparent where the beach would be showing through. So it'd be a lot lighter in the foreground where I would see a little bit of beach showing through the water. Can you see that kind of try to make it look like shallow water by mixing the beach color with the water color? Mm So Julie, I'm going to have to let mine dry because I really kind of messed up. So I'm just going to let it dry and paint over the bottom part. Okay. Because mine came out green. Yeah, it was, uh, mine did a little bit too. Which the, uh, the sandy bit at the bottom? Oh yeah, yeah no, mine's like green, green. <laughs> Well, I'm going to hair dry mine a little bit so I can add some more onto my beach because that's the only thing with doing the palette knife. It's very thick. 
It takes longer to dry. But I do love the textures. So don't forget, if you are doing palette knife, it's supposed to be fairly abstract and very loose and viewed from a distance. So don't worry too much about detail and make sure you keep stepping away from it. Um, you know, put it on a shelf or, you know, put it on the mantelpiece and walk away and see what it looks like from a distance. When everybody is ready, we're going to have a go at the grass and reeds. And then we're going to make a few little cute seagulls. Can you spot my abstracty <laughs> seagull? For those people who are fans of the fan brush could use their fan brush. Does anybody want to share so far? <laughs> I had to fix, so not yet. This is what I've got so far. Let's see, Mary. Oh, wow, look at that. Gorgeous. Thank you. Very nice, Mary. Are you pleased with that? I am. Using the palette knife is makes it interesting. Yeah, forces it to be loose, I think. Mm hmm I've only used a palette knife on mountains. I haven't actually used it with anything else. It's really nice on water, I think, and on sky. But it's a totally different way of painting. You have to be loose. Yes, it's it's getting used to how to hold it. and Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, definitely a completely different discipline. It is, it is. And it's one I haven't really practiced enough. So whoever made this suggestion this week of doing palette knife, thank you. It's forced me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm glad it was the palette knife this week because I think I missed last week and I thought it was the palette knife. So I'm, I'm glad I didn't miss it. So I'm going to make um, air. Oh, very nice. I love the shoreline too. That's really, mm. the sky is so soft that I love it. Really, really cool. So I'm gonna make a kind of ready brown by mixing green 
and red together. So if you don't have green and red, then just make a green first, a blue and yellow, like you would with your sky, and then add a bit of red to it. I'm going to put a bit of this red in with my green. And kind of mix them all around. I flipped my lid. <laughs> And then um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this dark ready green and then I'm going to start bringing some yellow ochre into it. So I'll show you the purpose for this to start with. So I'm going to create a few kind of little dark patches in my, um, in my sand where- What color is this? So this is green and red together. I've made a bit of a kind of brown greeny brown. So I'm just creating a few little dark patches where I'm going to have um, some grass growing out of. Mine made more of a dark purple. Hmm. And it was alizarin and phthalo? Yeah, alizarin and phthalo green. That's interesting. Oh, well, just add some ochre to it. I'm going to add some ochre to mine in a minute anyway. All right. So I'm putting in a few little patches. And then um, I'm actually going to put some ochre, mix some ochre in. Okay, now it's a gray. Help. Gray? <laughs> okay, well. Maybe I should just go get my brown. <laughs> I don't know how you made gray. I have no idea. So you put your yellow or orca in now? Yeah, I just added it kind of on top. Just in a, so it's the yellow oak is making it um, a bit of a lighter green. But I am going to do something with it in a minute. I'm going to drag it with my palette knife. So I'm kind of piling it on a little bit. I'm just create, putting a few patches in and then either with whatever palette knife you're comfortable with, I might switch to my bigger one. I'm going to drag, see which way I did it. I'm going to start dragging some grass and changing directions. In a minute, I'm going to add some more color, but I'm just kind of dragging it a little bit.
Julie, can I see with your um, what you're doing in your palette with your knife? Yep. So this is my little mess here. So I got my red and green. And then I'm dipping some of my yellow. I'm taking some of this red and green. So I'm putting some of this in my grass and then I'm actually dipping some of my yellow ochre into red and green too. So I'll do it here. So let's take a little bit of this. This red and green. And I'm kind of doing a few kind of curvy reads. And then kind of do a few by hand as well with a little brush. I'm just carrying on putting some grass in.
and then the, the reeds. Gonna take some yellow ochre, a tiny bit of green. I'm gonna look at my reeds. Either do this with a fan brush or with, and I'm just gonna put a few kind of those kind of feathery those feathery bits. I don't know what these are called. Kind of like when the grass goes to seed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mary, is your, is it your son in Alberta? Is he okay with all the forest fires and stuff? Um, they have the effect of the smoke. Um, they do feel it, but they're not near it, but they are getting the effect of the smoke. Wow. And she, they went to um, up into the mountains and they took some pictures and you could just see the mountain was all haze. You really, you really couldn't see it. It looked like which you would say almost fog, but it was really smoke haze. Wow. I know the, the one time when I was there, they had a fire, like, I think it was um, Slave Lake. So it was quite a ways away, but it was like somebody had just put a fire out and that burning, part of the fire, the smoke that just got up your yeah. nose. And it was like, I don't know how people work outside because it was so strong. Wow. And yet we were so far away. I, yeah. I basically stayed in all that day because I, I didn't like the, the smell. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? It is. And to think like it can be so far away and yet you, you really get the effects. Yeah, we can see the haze across the fields here. Yes, if, well, we had some red. The sun one day was totally red when it was yeah. setting. Yeah. And then the moon has been very orange. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a ticket booked to go out September 15th. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll be nice. Yes. I'm, um, my daughter and I are keeping it a secret to the rest of the family. Oh. Just, just in case. You never know. And I don't want the kids to be excited and then something happens and then I have to cancel. Yeah. So my son and my grandchildren won't know until I literally show up at the door. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. I did that with my parents a, while, a few years ago now, and it was really cool. So I think when I do go back to England, I'm going to do the same thing. Do the same thing. Yeah. Well, my, da my daughter-in-law knows because she'll be picking me up and she'll make an excuse. But well, she does photography, so she'll just tell them she has a shoot. Yeah, you have to have somebody who's in on it. Oh, yep. <laughs> Um, Julie, I am going to say good night. I'm quite tired. Yeah, no worries. Uh, but here's my my final. Oh, let's see it. Oh, oh really? Oh, now, fantastic. well, I'll record the seagull part, and there's just a little bit of highlights we're going to put in the beat. So I'll record that for you. Okay, sounds great. And send it to you. Night, night, Hillary. Sleep tight. Night, everybody. <laughs> good night, Hillary. Okay, so we are gonna do a few highlights in the beach and we're gonna do our seagulls. So I think I'm gonna 
show you the seagulls first. Yeah, I'll do the seagulls first. Okay, so the seagulls, we're going to do a little triangle or heart shape. I might have to zone in on this. It's going to be very, very loose though. Okay, so we've got a little triangle. I'm going to do a little kind of square here, which implies the tail. Be very, very abstract. And then one line for the wing. One line for the other wing. Okay, and then put a little bit of yellow ochre mixed with some white. And then very, very abstract. And then just a little bit of gray on the tips of the wings. So I'm going to show you my demo one because you can see how how abstract I did them. Just really just like a, a curve line, a curve line, and then two little black dots for the wings. And this one, I just kind of made the impression of the body, but again, kept it really, really loose. I did this one with a palette knife, actually. Wow. <laughs> so basically two curved lines, that's all you did? Two curved lines with a little pointy bit. I did this one with a palette knife. I'm going to do some more for you to show you. I'll do it with a palette knife. Okay. Okay, so let's do another one. So, tiny bit for the body. Make, can you make it bigger? Okay. Let's do a curve line one way. It's just the suggestion of a seagull. Okay, and then you know, make a gray, just with a bit of black and white. Uh, I'm just gonna dot It really is just the suggestion. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize it wasn't focused. <laughs> I can say that's what better. happens. You have to tell me. <laughs> I thought it was just my my view. Okay, so I'm just touching up this first one I did. And a little blob on the front. It really is very, very abstract. And then we can do some distant ones, which are even more subtle.
do the kind of little, oops, little end. Just kind of dot all the way back on there. Well, from a distance, it's really effective. It's so interesting how the brain makes up the rest of the, the picture, you know. And one thing that I did put in is the suggestion of some ships. So I'm going to put like a little... Put Theodore Tugboat in it. Sorry? Put Theodore Tugboat in it. <laughs> well, I'm just going to pull... Just a little suggestion of some ships. Okay, and then there's one last stage. I'm just going to get some white, the very small amount of ochre, like I don't want much at all. I want this to be mostly white. You need to focus, Julie. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of white in my sand. Oh, I've accidentally got some black in there. Okay. I'm just going to put some highlights in my sand. Gone a little bit too light. them side by side again. Bring this up. A bad forgery of my own. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things I can touch up tomorrow, Some but I would definitely... Some selling in on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Eve in the morning.
You do have a beautiful voice, Jared. Yeah, you do. You reminded me of the you reminded me of that song because you made three chefs. Yeah, totally. You know, so I'll probably like play around with the grass a little bit more. Um, when it's really, really dry and put in a few more kind of highlights and low lights. It's really pretty. Sorry? Very pretty. Oh, thank you. I, I'm just, it's really fun creating shapes and your mind recognizes that that's a seagull and that's a ship but really it's just a splodge you know yeah. so uh, when you did your ships you just did a white line up is that all you did yeah i'll give you a little oh yeah just a splodge, just a splodge. <laughs> you know and, and it actually was an accident on this one. I was doing um, my clouds and I accidentally put a splodge there and I went, oh, it looks like a ship. So then it is another one either side. And um, yeah, the seagulls, again, I just made them very, very, very subtle and splodgy. Technically, I should put a little bit of a shadow underneath my seagull, but. So that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed um, painting with me today. Um, please check out my other YouTube videos and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Enjoy your painting.